Hi, I'm Nick, Nick Madge. In a moment, I'm going to talk about my photographic project, Pandemic Portraits. But I thought it might be helpful, first of all, to say a little bit about where I'm coming from. So I had a completely different career. I had a job which I loved. It was intense, it was demanding, but it was a great job. But I've seen far too many people who worked for too long. They worked, they did the same job too long. And I decided that I wanted to stop that job um, while I was still young enough to do other things, to pursue other avenues. And I've always taken photographs, mainly photographs of people. And I've had exhibitions, I've published photo books in the past. So I wanted to concentrate more on my photography, but the way in which I'd done it in the past was always as an individual, self-taught, on my own. And so I decided to sign up for an MA in documentary photography and photojournalism at the University of the Arts in London so that I could explore photography in a more collective, collaborative way. So I did that. That was absolutely wonderful. There I was on a campus with 7,000 creative students, mainly under 30, all from very diverse backgrounds. I just learned so much. It was wonderful. But then when I finished the course in at the end of 2019, for the next six months or so, I had a block, a, a kind of photographic fog. It's the kind of block I think that many creative people have from time to time. And I decided that really the problem for me was that I was asking myself the question, Nick, why the F should you take photographs? And I couldn't answer it. Um, but then time went by and we found ourselves in the pandemic. And I thought, we're living through history. Someone should be documenting this so that we don't forget about what it's like. Why don't I take photographs? And so I approached the St Albans Museum with the idea that I would take photographs to document the pandemic and decided that we could call it pandemic portraits. They were very positive. And so I bought myself online a fairly cheap backdrop frame, bought myself some black material from John Lewis and started going up into the marketplace in St Albans, setting up my backdrop and approaching people saying, hi, I'm working with St Albans Museums to document the pandemic. Can I take your photograph, please? And so what I've been doing since last October is photographing people, both with and without their COVID masks, and asking everyone to write a few words about the pandemic, what they think about it, how it's affected them. And I've been producing the photographs, the portraits, with the captions, what people have said, as digital diptychs. So, photographs side by side with a caption underneath. And those photographs, those diptychs will go into the museum archives, but we've also now got an exhibition going on in the museum. We've sourced a 65 inch digital screen and all of the photographs are up on the screen with a musical soundtrack. So each month also, I, I didn't want it to be a dry, dusty archive type exhibition. I wanted it to be ongoing, interactive, community-based. And so each month I've been releasing the photographs on social media, on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on St Albans Facebook groups, St Albans Past and Present, Isolation Arts Cafe, St Albans People, and each month with a different musical soundtrack. So largely St Albans-based musicians have been composing or playing music, which echoes the sentiments, the emotions of the pandemic. And they, they go with the portraits, they go with the comments. And I think that the, the sum of the three parts, the, the, the total is more than the individual of the three parts. The, having the three together has, I hope, produced quite a powerful commentary quite a powerful record of the pandemic. And so the more and more that I've done this, I've seen it as a way for people to express themselves, for people to say what their hopes and fears are, what the bad things and the good things of the pandemic have been. So it's a kind of democratization. It's a way in which people can say how they feel, how the pandemic has been affecting them. And I've been gaining a perspective which we don't get from mainstream media. 
And what I've been getting is, it's very, very diverse. Everyone is different. Um, some people, the pandemic has just totally devastated. It's wrecked lives. It's killed people. But on the other hand, there are people who've seen it as a positive thing. Um, there are people who've enjoyed it. And so just looking in a bit more detail, um, Yes, I've photographed outside the town hall in the marketplace, but I've wanted to listen to as many different people from different backgrounds as possible. So I've also engaged with different groups in St Albans. So um, Open Door, Housing Homeless People, uh, the um, Sopol Community Trust, which among other things has been organizing food boxes, food deliveries. Um, Passport to Leisure and the Daylight Club, um, groups that are helping people with young adults with disabilities of various kinds. I've contacted different faith groups. So I've photographed people at Friday prayers at mosques. I've photographed people involved with the cathedral. And I've also photographed at vaccination centers. That's, you know, that's been just so positive, um, engaging with the health service professionals and above all with the volunteers who've given up their time to help with the vaccination program. So going back to what people have said, if I can summarize, very, very different. But overall, it's been a public resilience. We're coping, we're getting through this. But a lot of personal angst, personal pain, sometimes private, sometimes not so private. I'm photographing people immediately after they've written about their thoughts about the pandemic. And people are saying, that the photographs, the portraits are really expressing, are really showing, revealing people's emotions. And I think that that's happening because people are thinking about what they've written about the pandemic immediately after writing what they thought about the pandemic. So that's meaning that people are probably revealing perhaps more about themselves than they, re they realize. It's it's an expression of thoughts, feelings, emotions about the pandemic. So what have we heard? We've heard about deaths. Over 150,000 people have died with COVID on their death certificate. Probably 360 people in St Albans had died with COVID on their death certificate. It's tragic. There's a huge problem with long COVID. People who ha had COVID a year ago and are still, still have brain fog, still have a lack of energy, are still ill. We hear about people whose businesses have failed, people who've lost their business that they put hard work into. Obviously that's hospitality, but it's all other kinds of businesses which have failed. People have lost their jobs. People have had to change work completely. Some people have not found new work. Other people have found new work in completely different areas. So I've spoken to photographers who are now Deliveroo or Uber Eats deliverers, cycling around delivering food to people. Um, I've spoken to people who were in arts, musicians, um, who've now got administrative jobs. People have found new work, different work, but other people have not found new work. COVID's had an effect upon mental health. There's been isolation. Um, mental health is, is a great British taboo. We don't say we have mental health problems, but increasingly people that I've been listening to out in the marketplace have been very open saying about their mental health problems. And we don't know how this is going to affect us long term. But I don't just want to be negative. There have been huge positive things. There have been people who've said, yes, I'm sad about the death, but frankly, I've really enjoyed it. I want it to happen again. I've enjoyed the peace and quiet. Um, I've enjoyed positive new things. 
some businesses have thrived. So I listened to a guy with an electric bike shop. He's had booming business um, in the arts. There's been amazing creativity. People have composed new music. Um, quilters have done wonderful new artwork. There's the collective gallery, um, which um, on the hill leading down from the center of town, where there's amazing artwork being shared. Um, there's been benefits to the environment. People have really enjoyed the peace and quiet. People have spent more time with their families. I've listened to people who've said, well, I used to commute into London every day. I didn't have dinner with my family most evenings. Now it's great. I have dinner with my children every evening. There's been more family, family contact, perhaps by Zoom. Okay, people have missed hugging each other, but families, communities have come together. There has been a new sense of community clapping for the health service. People in local communities have looked out for each other far more. So it's, it's a really mixed experience. It's been devastating and awful for some people. It's been good for some people. We don't know where it's going to go. And I've said that I will photograph for a complete year. I started in October last year. I'll go on to September this year and we'll see where it goes. I'm seeing obviously the changes of the seasons. It's really interesting seeing how people's clothing has changed from being very black and gray during the dark winter months. And people now that it's June and we have some sunshine at long last, people are wearing brighter colors. Maybe moods are changing, but what I'm getting is that we're still very uncertain about where it's going. We don't know what's going to happen with COVID. And it's one of the problems that, and it's something that people have said, we simply don't have enough information. Perhaps to some extent it's because it is a pandemic. We haven't had anything like this for a hundred years. And even the scientists don't know where it's going. The government probably doesn't know where it's going. Um, we don't know where it's going. And that uncertainty has been a problem. It's still a problem. And I think that although the vaccination program is going so well, that really is one of the great positives is just how well the vaccination program is going. We still don't know what's going to happen. It's a global pandemic. Yes, geographically, we're an island. But epidemiolo epi epidemiologically, no one is an island. And so we really don't know when we're going to be at the end of it until there's been a lot of vaccination all over the world. So uncertainty. We don't know where it's going to be going. But I certainly for the rest of the time up until September, will be listening to people, will be photographing people and seeing where we're going finding out more. So it's an open project. I really want to hear from other people. I want as many people from as different backgrounds to be photographed, to contribute, to express themselves. So I'm really happy for people to come up to me in the street. I'm still approaching people. But if anyone is involved with a group um, who don't feel that their voice is being heard sufficiently, contact me. I'm very happy to work with groups to go to wherever you're based and take photographs, listen to you. Um, but I'll keep on photographing outside the town hall. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that makes sense. And please, please do get in touch. Thank you very much for having me.